morning, everybody. I'm Tiffany Almeida, and I'm with Pretty and Paper Crafts. And I love going live every Sunday for coffee and a card. And uh, today is no exception. It's a fabulous Sunday. It is raining here, but I absolutely love the rain. Um, and I'm so excited to go live with you and demonstrate three beautiful projects using one of Stampin' Up's amazing stamp sets. Stampin' Up has the best products and I love their stamp sets and I just have a blast designing with them. So here is my March Stampin' Rewards code. Uh, men, yeah, four. <laughs> I thought that was funny. Um, anyways, I'm giving away um, embellishments. These are the candle embellishments. They're absolutely adorable. Um, they come in silver and gold and they have adhesive on the backs, little adhesive strips, which I thought was genius. I love that. So I don't have to worry about gluing them down and worrying about them sticking. This is great. So anyways, everybody that places an order with me using this code um, here on my online store, if you place a $50 order this month, you get a set of these candle embellishments from me for free. So it's very exciting. And yes, the candles can be purchased separately. They are available on the online store, but you can get them for free from me for placing an order. So very, very cool. I always like to do a reward each month. And uh, so if you have any questions about that, let me know. So thank you very much. All right, you guys, here are today's projects. Oh my gosh, this set, though it is simple and there's not a lot to it, this lovely lattice set, though it's simple and there's not a lot to it, I'm telling you they, it is gorgeous. And my camera is not gonna do it justice. Um, but this set is absolutely beautiful and so fun to color, let me tell you guys. So I'll go over each project a little bit. This first one was a happy accident. Thank God for Bob Ross because he said there's no such thing as mistakes, there's only happy accidents. So this is actually a clear acetate box. What I tried to do was I tried to gold emboss the box but the heat of the embossed gun actually warped the box so I couldn't use it. So I actually cut it out and created a window with it. So it literally looks like you're looking through a window. And so I just kind of kept the gold theme going and I did some gold. I embossed the sentiment. So I can't wait to show this to you. This is um, definitely my favorite. Um, I love how beautiful it turned out. So very beautiful card. Now this one, I so I thought, you know, this may be a simple stamp set, but let's turn it into something amazing, right? So I did this fancy fold card, and you can see it opens up, and I have used the exact same flowers from this set, but I stamped corners of them to create these little panels. Isn't that beautiful? Absolutely stunning, and then I used the sentiment from um, Beauty Abound. Our friendship isn't one big thing, it's a million little things. So this is just gorgeous and it's so stunning when you open it. Very simple but fancy fold. And then this last one, I have wanted to try this kind of fancy fold where there's like two hinges like so. And so I finally did and I really loved this lovely lattice. Now you can, you'll see that I colored this lovely lattice three different ways, but this is with watercolor and I just used my aqua painter and then I did have to fussy cut out the um, flowers. But let me ask you guys something. Is it just me or does the gingham gala paper like go perfectly with the lovely lattice? I feel like they were made to be together. They just, they are so appealing to my eye when they're together. So very, very cool, right? Oh, is this called a Dutch door? I love it. So anyways, I wanted to show you, you can take this simple stamp and make very beautiful, complicated cards. But I'm telling you, these fancy folds are not complicated. So I'm really excited to show you um, how to do these. I'm gonna start with our, kind of, I'm calling it the Z fold. I'm not quite sure what the actual name of it is, but I'm calling it the Z fold. We'll start with this one and then we'll move on to the other projects. So here we go. We have two pieces here. We have the Daffodil Delight. Now this is cut at four and a quarter by 11 and it's scored at five and a half and two and three quarters. So two and three quarters and five and a half. And you're gonna fold it like a Z, okay? So this, this half piece is going to be the top and this full panel is gonna be the bottom. And then I have a piece of gray granite and this is measured at three 
three and, three and a quarter by 10. And I don't remember the scoring. Um, it scored at four and a half and seven and a quarter. So four and a half, seven and a quarter. Okay, so the, the smaller section is actually gonna be the bottom of the card and the big panel is actually gonna be the top. So it will end up laying like this, okay? So let's set these aside and we'll focus on the stamping real quick. There are three pieces that we have to stamp. One piece measures uh, four and a quarter by three, and then we have two pieces that measure two and a half by three. So we'll get our lovely lattice stamp set out. So there's three um, stamps in the lovely lattice and it's again that cling stamp, so it's sticky. Love that. And I'm just gonna put this on a big block here. Now we are coloring with our blends, so I need my Memento Black ink. And I'm just gonna ink this up really good. I am not liking this shadow. There's a shadow and it's bothering me. Let's see if that helps. Okay, so my lovely lattice, I'm just going to stamp that in the center of my card here. And there we go. So beautiful, I love that. And then for our two pieces at the bottom. Now one of the, one of the panels I stamped the big flower. So I'll ink up the big flower section. Okay, so I just did a flower here in the corner. Okay, and then on this side, I did kind of this section here of bundle of flowers, so this kind of side. So I'm gonna ink that up as well. And that will be on this piece on the corner here. Uh-oh, I got my little corner there. That's not good. I'll have to flip this over and do that again. I didn't get it out of the way. Shoot. It's okay, that's why there's always two sides to a piece of paper. So there we go. All right, so you have these three beautiful images. Now we're gonna take the little flower out of the stamp set and get a little block. And we're gonna do these little kind of flowers in the corner here. So let me move that out of the way. So we'll do a little flower in this corner and we'll do a little flower in this corner. Okay. So let's go ahead and clean off our, our stamps here. <clears throat> squeaky, squeaky, as Janie calls it. All right, so now let's go ahead and stamp our sentiments and then we'll do the coloring. So for the sentiments, like I said, I used the Beauty Abound stamp set. I absolutely love the sentiments in here. And I wanted to do a friendship card. So one, our friendship is, isn't is one big thing. It's a million little things. Isn't that the sweetest sentiment? I think that is absolutely adorable. I'm just getting some blocks out so that I can stamp this. So. Our friendship isn't one big thing. It's a million little things. So cute. Okay, so that's it for the stamping. Now um, you guys get to watch me color with blends. Yay, are you so excited? Now the colors that I'm using, I have uh, four different colors. I have Flordy Flamingo, Daffodil Delight, Granny Apple Green, and Balmy Blue. Okay, so what I did was I decided to make my big flowers uh, Flirty Flamingo. You're very welcome. I hope it was close enough. And so, um, always start with the light color first. So I'm just kind of giving it a base coat, I guess is how I see it. 
So base coat of um, Flirty Flamingo. This is the light Flirty Flamingo. And then I'll come back in and I'll accent it with the dark Flirty Flamingo. And then while it's still wet, I'll go back over it with the light and blend, okay? So there's my light flirty flamingo. So let's do some shading. So where it would naturally be shaded, so maybe in the center and then back behind the leaves, right? So, cause the sun isn't shining there. Maybe some down there. And then again, throw out your big flower. And it doesn't have to be precise, I mean, if you feel that it does, you can be really precise. But for timing purposes, I'm just kind of going to give you like the speed version. Okay, maybe the center's very pink. Okay, so once you have gone over the image with the dark, then you're going to take your light. And I like to do this part. I like to do the blending with my fine tip. I don't know why, but I feel like it blends better than the brush tip. So I am just kind of coloring back over where I did the dark to blend those lines. I just do it in like a circular motion just to kind of get the edges to be a little bit, you know, not so obvious. And you can start to see it kind of creates this dimension of color, you know, the, the natural shading. Okay, and so then we're gonna do the exact same thing with the yellow flowers. I'm gonna try and use my brush tip just to be quick about it. Okay. So then we're gonna do our green leaves and I just again start with the light granny apple green, kind of give it a base. So I'm just kind of darkening by the leaves, like where the petals meet the leaves and then on the veins of the leaves where there'll be creases. Okay. Uh, and then again, we'll go back over with our light fine tip and just kind of blend those as best we can. Okay. And then last but not least <clears throat> is the balmy blue. And I liked the balmy blue for the lacy background or the trellis background or whatever kind of background this is supposed to be. And I just kind of, I'm using the brush tip, but I'm being really careful in between the flowers. You have to be careful with blends because they do bleed. But again, blends make it easy, you guys. I am not an artist by any means but blends just make for a beautiful portrait and it takes, as you can see, not a lot of effort. Okay, so there is our beautiful, lovely lattice. I'll bring it up closer so you guys can see all my mistakes, but look how gorgeous that is. And with the blends, it just kind of adds dimension. It's really, really pretty. Now I could keep going. I could keep, you know, adding um, shading with the balmy blue around the flowers. You know, it could be darker around the flowers, but for time's sake, I'm not gonna sit you guys through that but you can just keep going and make, make it even more dimensional. Okay, so then we have you know a couple more flowers to color, so I'll try to get through these quickly. So, okay, so there we go, you guys. I'm done coloring, finally. Painted Seasons, thank you, Terry. Thank you, Terry, Painted Seasons. All right, so I have this a beautiful lace embossing folder. This embossing folder is so great, it's a dynamic, textured embossing folder, which means it really makes a beautiful impression. So I embossed this top section here with this lovely lace. So I am going to just put it in all the way up to that score line and then run it through the big shot real quick. And, oops, I need my regular plate. Ooh. 
So this only takes one clear plate because it's so thick. So just put one clear plate at the top and run it through. Okay, and so you can choose which side you want, whatever side you like better. I think this side is really pretty, so I'm gonna use this side. Okay, and then we need to glue our panels on to our gray granite. So I'm just gonna use liquid glue. You can use runner or whatever works. Okay, and then making sure I put my sentiments in the right order, because you know that's something I would do. I would put the sentiments out of order and it'd be hilarious. Okay, so section there and then our last section. Here. Like so. Okay, so now I was trying to figure out what is the best way to get this um, on our on our card. And I tried doing where I just glued the bottom down first and then did that, but it just didn't work. It wasn't very um, even. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna adhere it just flat. So what I'll do is I'll put adhesive on this bottom panel Okay, and I will just lay it flat, making sure that it's as straight as I can be. Okay, and then for this top piece, I only wanna glue this top section. I don't wanna glue to this middle panel. So to see this middle panel, don't wanna put any glue there, just in this top section. So this is kind of a little bit more tricky to glue. But what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna just put glue on this panel, right about so should be good. Kind of keeping an eye on, you know, where, making sure that glue doesn't go outside the line. But we'll just glue that down. And I think this is gonna make for a much straighter card than before. Oh yeah, look at that. Aw, isn't that just stunning? What a pretty, pretty card. And really there was nothing to it. There was just some coloring. So pretty, guys, right? My camera is not doing a job. <clears throat> okay, probably should let the glue dry. Just add that, Heather, just add that to my Facebook fails, if you would. I'm gonna start keeping track of my Facebook fails because they are substantial. <laughs> All right, so just wanna make sure this is dry. And then the last thing we're gonna do is tie a little bow with our with my polka dot tool ribbon. I love this ribbon. I have to do mine upside down, you guys know. If you know me, you know I tie upside down. Okay, so just gonna wrap it around this top panel here. And tie a bow. Okay, and then we'll trim off the Extra. See how I never cut my ribbon off my spool until I'm ready to cut, until I've tied the bow, and this helps me not waste very much ribbon. Okay, so there we go. And then I could fuss with this so it would lay flat, but beautiful. I love this card, you guys. Such a stunning, pretty spring card. Great for Easter, Mother's Day, or just uh, any any occasion. So very fun card. Thank you guys for sitting through my coloring so you guys can see that card. All right, let's go ahead and move on to this card, which I told you was my happy accident card. I, I embossed on an acetate card box. You guys know what that looks like? This is an acetate card box. And it opens up to be a box that you can fit cards or sweets in. But anyways, I wanted to emboss the front. I thought that would be a really pretty kind of accent to the box. But it did warp it, and I wasn't able to use the box, so I cut it up. What I'm going to try to attempt to do 
is do the same thing but use a window sheet. So I'm gonna see if a window sheet will work and withstand the heat gun. If not, then I'll do it on the acetate box again and ruin another acetate box. Okay, so let's do the, the heat gun process first. I'm just gonna use a scrap piece of paper for, um, to put under my, my piece of um, window sheet. And I'm going to take my embossing buddy and I am going to just run it across here. Window sheets tend to have a lot of static and so the powder tends to stick to the whole entire window sheet. So you'll need your embossing buddy for sure if you're gonna do this. And then you'll need your Versamark ink. And we'll need the stamp. We gotta get the stamp out. Okay. All right, so we're going to, seems to do better upside down here. I'm going to ink this up. Okay, nice and juicy. And we will stamp this image. And try not to wiggle it because it is on a you know, a shiny surface that can slide. So we have our image there. It's really hard to see, even for me, but it's there. And then I have my gold embossing powder, which I am running out of. I need to get some more. Okay, so we have our image. I'm just gonna put this in my bucket to kind of catch as much powder as possible. Has anyone tried to heat emboss a window sheet before? I'm actually kind of nervous. Okay, so I'm actually pretty happy with this. Pretty happy with the image, came out pretty good. Uh, I have a little paintbrush and then I can just brush off any extra embossing powder that's stuck around the image, just brush it off. Now we are gonna be cutting this out. So I don't have to fuss too much because this outer part won't even be seen. All right, so let's get our heat gun and pray for me you guys while I do this. And like, I, like Karen says, I'm gonna try keeping the heat um, moving and not in one spot for very long. It does take a few seconds to heat up. This is a very old heat gun too, so that plays into it a little bit. I'm just so afraid. There we go, starting to train. Oh, the window sheet seems to hold it, seems to take it pretty good. The acetate box seems to like melt right away. Man, our window sheets, okay, this is just a testament to how fabulous our window sheets are um, and how much they can withstand. That's awesome. Very cool. Okay, so there you guys, we have our beautiful gold embossed image. Wow, this actually turned out better than my first one. Okay. There's something to, to be said about playing, and I'm really, really happy with how that turned out. All right, so it's time for the big shot, and I have my layering oval framelits, and we're going to make a frame. I'm gonna bring my card back in so you guys can see. We're going to make a gold frame using two of our layering ovals. So this is actually the biggest scallop oval, and then the third biggest um, regular oval. Okay, so that's gonna be, I have a piece of gold here and that's going to be our frame. We also need to cut out the center of our um, card, but we're gonna use that same oval that we're using for the frame so that the frame and the oval in the center will be the same, same measurement. Okay, and then I'm going to use the largest oval to cut out my image. So we're just gonna cut it out. It 
it is going to be, um, it's going to cut out some of the, what am I trying to say? The image, so don't be worried about that. But you just want, whatever you want to be seen in the middle is going to be the section that you keep. Okay, so let's do that. Let's bring the big shot in. sheets to the rescue honestly I don't know why I battled with that acetate box yesterday I should have just went straight to the window sheet that cut out so perfectly I was telling you guys all this horror like oh watch out it's gonna be hard and then look it was easy okay the one last thing we have to do with the big shot is emboss with the tuft embossing folder which I have no idea where it's at should have been in my box Oh, it is very at the very bottom. Okay, so this is that tuft embossing folder. It's another dy dynamic embossing folder, so it's very thick. It makes a very impressioned paper, you know, Im image. So we're going to put this now. Always make sure that Stampin' Up logo is on the front if you want the impression to come out. Okay, if you want the impression to be indented, then you'll have the Stampin' Up image in the back. Okay, so. We have that here, and then we need to bring a big shot again. And we need a regular plate. And we need one clear plate, which my plate is anything but clear. <laughs> it's well loved. Janie, you know me, I love to experiment, but it's just funny how easy the window sheet was compared to <laughs> to the, uh, oh no, I was off a little bit. Oh well, darn it, I have a little bit of an edge there. You wanna make sure that you center it up real good in the middle. Um, I was off a little bit, as you can see, so I have an edge, but that's okay. We're gonna use our imaginations and, and we're gonna imagine that Tiffany is a perfect crafter, okay? Put that image in your guys' head. Tiffany is a perfect crafter. Okay, so this is our window. I'm gonna put the embossed side facing forward. So the, the, the non-embossed side is going to be the back. And I'm just going to use liquid glue and use a fine, fine amount. Don't go crazy with the liquid glue because it will leak out to the front of your card and make a big old mess. Did the video stop? I don't think so. Okay, so we're gonna put that in the back and just give it a minute. Love on it, rub it, pat it, mark it with a B, put it in the oven for baby and me. Why did that move? Honestly, don't move. Don't do this to me, Facebook Live. Okay. So the other thing we're gonna do to make sure it actually stays down really well and you won't be able to see the image, the stamped image inside is I'm actually gonna cover this whole panel with a piece of Very Vanilla. Okay, and the Very Vanilla is four by five and a quarter. Oh, good idea, Janie. I will try that. And so I'm just gluing this panel on and it's gonna hold our lace down even more our beautiful flower image. I call it lace, but it's my flower image. And just have this kind of back panel. Hi, Teresa. Thanks for joining me. Okay. Barbie bag. Cute, cute idea. All right, so let's try Janie's idea and kind of rub this out with the bone folder. Genius. We'll rub out this side too to match. Okay, 
So that does kind of help tone it down a little bit so you can't really see my mistakes. So you can see I've got this very vanilla background. I've got this beautiful window in the front. Look how gorgeous that is. What a stunning, just stunning image. And now I have to <laughs> find my gold frame. Here it is. Here's my gold frame. Look how pretty this gold is. I just love it. This is our gold foil sheets. <clears throat> and I'm just putting a thin line of liquid glue, this Tombow liquid glue around the frame. And we'll line this up. What a pretty card. Just beautiful. And again, we're just gonna just hold it down. Let that liquid glue dry. Because it's a textured, you know, the outside is textured, it's kind the glue doesn't have as much to hold on to to glue down. So just gonna hold that down and let it dry. Okay, so there we go. All right, let's go ahead and emboss our beautiful butterflies and our sentiment that goes out in the front. So what I used for this one is I used the butterfly bundle and I the butterfly gala bundle, which is not available yet. It'll be available March or April 1st. It's coming back from back, um, back order April 1st. So I'm super excited about that. So I used the um, lined butterfly. So we'll go ahead and get the lined butterfly out. There are lots of different butterflies to use, like the monarch pattern, the lines, there's all kinds of fun ones, even solid colors. So this is just a scrap of Coastal Cabana. I'm going to stamp the um, butterfly in Versamark ink and emboss in gold. So yeah, you guys get to watch me make a mess with embossing powder again. And so we'll get my Versamark ink. Versamark ink here. So who's going to finally do it? Who's gonna finally buy that starter kit? Who's gonna join my team and have an amazing, amazing time? I hope you are. All right. I hope you get $175 of product of your choice for $99. All of us demonstrators who signed up earlier and didn't get this amazing deal, we're all like, that's not fair. No, we think it's all we think it's an amazing deal. All right. So there's my embossed butterflies. Let's go ahead while we have this out and just stamp our sentiment. So the sentiment I used, I used a combination of two. So the first sentiment I'm going to use is you've been on my mind, which is in that butterfly gala stamp set. Okay? You've been in my mind. And then I have a piece of very vanilla somewhere hiding. Here it is. You guys like my uh, messy crafting style? I hope you do because <laughs> I'm all over the place. Okay, so I'm just gonna stamp it. This is half an inch by about two and a half inches. Just going to stamp that and do the whole gold emboss thing again. Yes, she is, Terry. I think I'll keep her. <laughs> I'm excited for her to be on our team. Isn't that going to be awesome? She's going to love it. Okay, I am just dropped the whole thing in here. So trying to tap off the extra. And I'm going to get that little brush. And to brush around the words so pray for me and a steady hand here just brushing away any extra all right let's go ahead and heat emboss this puppy both of these images it's so worth it like i know that the heat embossing is a little bit more time consuming but it's so worth it because the images are absolutely gorgeous all right so this one first
Oh, my Versa mark flipped over and stuck. Okay. So there's our sentiment and there's our butterflies. Now we will um, use the butterfly punch. Like I said, the stamp set I believe is available right now, but the punch is what's on back order and the punch is coming back April 1st. I'm so excited. I can't wait. So we'll just punch them up. You love, I love how the stamp set aligns with the punch perfectly. You are not having to line up two different butterflies at two different times. They just line up perfectly like this. So there's our punched image. And so now we get to just put our card together, which is awesome. So here we go. We're gonna put our sentiment here in the corner. April Fool's Day. Oh my gosh, that would be a horrible April Fool's joke. Janie, don't even say that. <laughs> if the stamp set came out on April 1st and they were like, come April 1st, they're like, April Fool's, just kidding. The stamp set's not really out. Oh, I'd be devastated. I mean, the punch, the punch isn't out of back order. All right, so for, I'm actually gonna use my regular glue dots for this. For the butterflies, I actually used glue dots to glue these down. What I like to do is kind of fold my butterfly in half so that the wings kind of pick up a little bit. And then I use a glue dot and I go, I find a glue dot and I stick my butterfly on there, pick it up, the glue dots on the paper now, and I'll just stick them on my project. And then what I did for this one is, I took some of our gold sequin trim and I just cut off a little section. I don't need this whole section. Just a little section, put this away. And then I just picked it up on a glue dot. Okay, and stuck that. Oh, I put it on the wrong side, whoops. All right, I'm gonna put my, I'm gonna fold my butterfly kind of in half. Put a couple glue dots on there. Stick my sequins on there. So see how I've got the sequins kind of, it's like a tail in the back. I've got some glue dots on there. I'm gonna put a couple more. I just want it to stick real good. Okay, and then I'll stick this down to my card down here. Beautiful. And then I did a sentiment um, so the top says, you've been on my mind. On the inside, I used the part of my story stamp set and did know that today a friend is thinking of you because I love that sentiment. This is another celebration item that's going away March 31st. Such a pretty, pretty sentiment. So I wanted to use it. And I did um, the inside since it's Coastal Cabana. I just stamped in Coastal Cabana on a piece of very vanilla. My workspace is a mess. Mess, mess, mess. Okay. Stink that up. Put that in the center. Oh, good. Yes, that's right, Danny. You did get it, didn't you? And then we'll glue that into the inside of our card base. And then you could stamp some more butterflies. You could stamp the lovely lattice, continue coloring. You could do all kinds of fun things. But that lovely lattice is like the stunning part of this card, that center kind of window. It's like a window outside. Like if you had a lattice and coastal cabana. Yep, gorgeous. You guys love it? Love this card? It's so pretty. I can't get enough of it. Project number three is that Dutch, is that what we decided it was called, Janie? The Dutch fold card? Is that what we decided this was called? Love this card. I love the colors. So the color combination, this is Poppy Parade, Balmy Blue, and Granny Apple Green. The Poppy Parade is absolutely just beautiful. I love Poppy Parade with the Balmy Blue. My new favorite color combination right now. And so let me get all the inks and things I'm gonna need for that. And let me tell you the measurements that you're gonna need for this project. Again, all of the measurements are on my project sheet, so check that out. And we're gonna do some water coloring. <clears throat> so you need a piece of five and a half by seven, scored at four and a quarter, okay? So this is that one side of the card. And then this piece is, it's three and three and three quarters by seven. 
and it scored at three and a half, okay? So it's got, this is going to be that kind of second piece. This is gonna be the inside piece, it's just a five and a quarter by four. So this is our shimmery white, it's stunning in person. I want you guys to see shimmery white cardstock. All right, so let's go ahead and do our watercolor portion first, okay? You're going to want to use stays on ink for this. So I'm going to have my lovely lattice and stays on ink. Okay, oh, look at the little sequin stuck to my stamp. Oh, really, Lisa? Thank you. You'll have to give it a try and see what you think. It's actually pretty easy. The only thing that's a little bit time consuming is fussy cutting out the lattice, of course. All right, so we'll stamp this on our piece of shimmery white. I'm just making sure it's got a nice solid image. There we go. And then I'm gonna use a baby wipe to clean this because they seem to clean the stays on really well. If you don't let the stays on dry and you wipe it off with the baby wipe real quick, it comes off really well. Okay, so we'll just let this dry for a second. I don't want the colors to run. What are the sizes? Oh, thank you for asking. So the sizes of the Gingham Gala, this is two and a half by five and a quarter. So two and a half by five and a quarter. And this one is three and a half by three and a quarter. So it fits this piece right here. Okay, so this should be pretty dry. We'll go ahead, I have my aqua painter. You're gonna need an aqua painter. And then I have my ink. So I'm gonna start with Balming Blue. I wanna do the background first. And what you'll wanna do is just kiss your, or squish your ink pad. So just squish the lid into the ink pad and you'll get a nice big section of ink to, to paint with. Okay, and I'm gonna use Balmy Blue on the background. I'm just gonna get my paper a little bit wet. Okay, and again with water, you have to be really careful because it does run. And you can see that the stays on is running just a little bit. Well, once we get color on there, you won't be able to tell. Okay, so I'm just getting the lace wet. And you're just gonna pick up some color and you can actually just touch it and you'll see, well, I say that, but usually you could just touch it if I had put enough water and it would just run on its own. It's a really cool effect. Now the reason I'm doing the balmy blue first is because last time I did balmy blue last and it bled into the flowers and then it made some of the flowers kind of look muddy and I didn't like that. So I figured if I did the outline first, this out this background, then if I do bleed into the flower, I can um, fix that with the watercolor. So I'm just going around the flowers. So like I said, I'm showing you three different ways. So I use Stampin' Blends. Now this is another way using our aqua painter. So this is fun if you like to watercolor paint. And again, you know, not balmy, or not balmy blue, um, blends don't come in every color yet, but Stampin' Up keeps, add, keeps adding more and more. So that's cool. Um, <clears throat> so aqua color is a great alternative if you're not using blends and it also gives it a different look. I kind of like a watercolor wash look. I think that's maybe why I like Brusho so much because it looks really just abstract and watercolor. Okay, so that is the um, Balmy Blue. Now let's do our Flowers and Poppy Parade. I love this. I try to give measurements while I'm putting it together, Karen. I will try to do better at that. Um, so I'm just gonna get this real wet and I got Poppy Parade on my um, brush and I'm just gonna spread the color out. I like to have the darkest in the center and then work out. Um, 
And yes, if I ever miss a measurement, know that my measurements are on my blog in my project sheet. So the link to my blog is in the description of this video and it, there is a project sheet that you can print off and it has every product that I use for my card and all the measurements of the pieces that I cut. So don't um, worry if you missed it or I forgot to say it because I have it all in one spot for you. So I'm just giving a base of Poppy Parade. It's really light, but I'm actually gonna go back over and one of the things that's really cool about watercolor is layers. Like you just do layers and layers of color and you get the best watercolor results. So I am just kind of, again, kind of like the blends, just doing like a base coat. I need more Poppy Parade. Bye Joyce, thank you for watching and thank you for sharing. Make sure you share um, because I am giving away one of my February blends kits. So it comes with a video tutorial and um, one of my one of the kits. So it has two projects cut and ready for you and a video tutorial to go along with it and even a little lantern, um, little candle. So it has everything for blends. So very exciting. You get a little taste of the blends club. It's a very elite club. <laughs> huh, girls, it's very elite. Secret society, just kidding. But we do have fun at blends. I think it's one of my favorite classes. We just get to do adult coloring and hang out for the evening. So as you can see, I'm just doing um, a, another round of color. And again, like the blends, I'm just kind of putting color um, where I think it would be maybe a little bit darker. And it's really fun. And again, it's not going to be precise. Okay, I'm going to stop there. So then you'll get the color out of your brush. Have all of you played with the Aqua Painter before? Are there any newbies that have never played with Aqua Painter? Because the Aqua Painter's pretty fun to color with. Should give it a go. Uh-oh, I forgot these little buds. I'm gonna have to come back. And the great thing about watercolor is I don't think you're supposed to stay in the lines with watercolor. It's my personal opinion. It's supposed to be like a watercolor wash, you know? Like abstract. Yes, Tammy. So you can see this is shimmer paper and I'm telling you like it hasn't started um, fraying on me. I can go over it and layer and layer and layer and it doesn't, you know, start peeling up. Um, and then when it dries, it has this pretty shimmer to it too. So I love it more than watercolor paper. I don't even buy the watercolor paper anymore. I just buy shimmer shimmer paper. It's really, it's a thick, shiny paper. You can see it hasn't even bled through on all this watercolor that I've done. Even with the flowers, it hasn't bled through. So, all right, I need to bring out my Poppy Parade one more time. <gasps> Cindy, you've never used the water paper. I did not use watercolor paper. I used the shimmery white paper. Lisa! Lisa, now that I cannot believe. It's fun. Aqua painters are fun. My kids love my aqua painters. Morgan tries to steal my aqua painter all the time. I'm like, no, that's my aqua painter. <laughs> all right, so it's done. I'm done coloring. What do you think? I'm an artiste. I know I'm not an artist, <laughs> but there you go. That's kind of the basic. Um, you could keep doing layers and layers and layers. I'm not gonna continue doing layers just because, you know, for time constraints. I'm gonna set this aside and let it dry for a few minutes before I cut it. Let's go ahead and do the inside sentiment, which is this piece here. And I did know that love, prayers, and caring surround you today. So this could be great for a sentiment, like a, um, what am I trying to say? 
uh, a sympathy card or um, really anything, any occasion. I use the Well Said stamp set. Dude, this has so many stamps. It's two cases full of stamps. And the framelits that go with it, oh, mind blown. A bunch of words. So this is in the occasions catalog. Don't overlook this set. Yes, it's spendy, but holy cow, look what you're gonna make with it. It has everything, everything from retirement to Mother's Day to birthday to, you know, congratulations on marriage, well done, everything. So um, a lot of um, value in this set. Okay, I so I stamped this in Balmy Blue, which I was like, I don't have, but no, I do have. Here's Balmy Blue. Just stamp this. Oh, bye, Colleen. Have a good day. Have fun. And stamp that here. Okay. And then I'm going to stamp a flower. Now, you'll want to make sure that your sentiment and stuff kind of hide behind the panel. Now, I did a pretty big panel. So unless you're stamping like way up here or way down here, you won't have to worry too much. Um, but I just made sure that mine was kind of, you know, in the center where I knew it was going to be covered. Okay, and then I did um, a flower, one of the smaller flowers, and I just, now this is, um, this is just a piece of Whisper White. So if you're gonna color with watercolor, be really careful and don't rub it too much because it will start to peel up. So I am going to watercolor with it, but I'm gonna be really careful and not rub it a lot, so. Got my aqua painter, got my poppy parade, and I'm going to do just a real quick paint job. Okay, just like that. And then I'll do the green. So you can do this on regular cardstock, but you cannot rub on it at all or it will come up. All right, so there's that. Just cleaning out my aqua painter. Now before I fussy cut that out, I'm going to still let it dry for a little bit. And while it's drying, let's go ahead and adhere our pieces. So we have our um, gingham gala paper. Now you can use the thick side, the bigger, grid or you can use the small side. I thought the smaller side looked better. So I'm going to glue that down to my panel. The sentiment is on regular cardstock. This is shimmery cardstock and this is regular white cardstock. And that's why I said when I colored that flower, I couldn't just I couldn't mess with it or do a bunch of layers because it would start to peel up. Whereas this one I can. Okay, and so then this piece will glue. Now, before I glue this piece down, I'm going to take my Poppy Parade mini striped ribbon. I love this Poppy Parade ribbon. Um, and I'm going to tie a bow around this panel piece. You're welcome, Cindy. Thank you for asking. We are too, Terry. It's been raining all morning, which I love. I had my doors open this morning, just listening to the rain smelling the fresh rain. I think our grass needed. I don't know if it helps that snow mold or not, but that snow mold is bad here, guys. Okay, so I've got my ribbon. I'm going to cut my piece off. And then I'm just gonna make sure the ribbon is all the way to the um, right side and we'll put adhesive on the back. I used a lot of liquid glue today. Don't know why. I go through phases, I guess. So we'll just glue that down to the center. And this is, remember, the side that opens this way. So make sure that you're gluing it, make sure you're gluing it like at the back side of a book. So it would be opening the back side of a book. That's the side you want to glue this panel down to, okay? Now the next side that we're going to do is we're gonna glue our sentiment to the inside of our little panel, okay? So we're gonna put adhesive on the inside of here. Okay. 
Okay. Put our panel here. And glue that down. And then we're going to put adhesive all on the back of here and glue it to the center. Okay. So then this, and you would just center this like you normally would a sentiment in the center of the card. So just center that. Really looks more complicated than it is, right? It's literally, three pieces, the inside piece, the smaller piece, and this outer piece, and they just come together so perfectly. So, so I'm gonna burnish this side so it stays folded down, and I think we're about ready to fussy cut this out real quick. I'm gonna use my paper scissors. So I use separate scissors for ribbon and my paper because paper dulls scissors. So if you don't know that, and you're noticing that your paper isn't, or your scissors aren't cutting your ribbon very well, it's probably because you're using it on paper as well and they, your scissors are getting dull. So what I did was I just purchased a pair of Stampin' Up! Snips that is solely for ribbon and it has stayed so much um, better, uh, sharper, and cuts my ribbon so well. So if you haven't designated a pair of scissors for ribbon only, you probably should, it's probably worth the investment. Otherwise, you're gonna go through scissors all the time because they're, they dull. Um, Stampin' Up! Scissors are great for all that fine detail like I'm doing now. I'm just cutting around the flowers. I'm not gonna get into all the nooks and crannies because that would take me a long time, but I am just kind of cutting around the flowers. Notice that I try to keep my scissors straight. I'm not doing a lot of work with the scissors that are in my hand. I'm doing the work with my other hand as I'm turning the paper. This is the correct way to cut. Otherwise your hand's gonna kill you and your paper's not gonna cut very nice. And you think, you know, I've been stamping for, gosh, going on, geez, I don't know, 12 years, more than that maybe. And I'm still learning new tips and tricks and new things every day. So hopefully by watching my video, you learn something new and uh, you know, you'll share the knowledge, share the wealth. And what works for one person may not work for another person. So that's kind of cool. I like that there's not a right or wrong way to do things, but there might be a better, simple, sim more simple, easy way to do things. So you can see here, it doesn't take too long to cut out the flowers. And I'm trying to leave just a thin, you know, line of white around the flowers. So worth it. It just is a stunning, stunning image. I love that poppy parade in the balmy blue, you guys. Look at that. Okay, so that's it, right? Super simple. <laughs> you guys are like, yeah, we fell asleep while you were cutting. No. Okay, time to wake up. <laughs> so I'm going to put some dimensionals on the back of this. We are almost done. You guys made it to the end. Good on ya. 24 people made it to the end. <laughs> 20 years and Karen, you're still learning. See, I love that. I love it. Never stop learning. I never want to stop learning. There's always new fun things to try and learn. And you know, the card, like this one lays down pretty well. I think once that panel gets heavy with the cardstock and the pearls, um, that it lays down pretty well. And I'll burnish the corners um, with the bone folder so it will stay. I'm not too worried about it staying closed. I think it will stay closed. So I'm sliding it underneath my ribbon and just laying it down with the dimensionals. And you can turn your ribbon sideways too. 
you know, fuss with their ribbon. Okay, and then of course we need some bling, right Terry? Always need that bling. I've got some pearls and our flowers need some pretty pearls. Now, you guys ever do this where you just slide the pearl right off with your thumb? So you're not having to try to pick it up and it comes away from the adhesive, just slide it right off. Just like that, stick it right down where it needs to go. I learned this trick from my upline. And there you go, three little pearls and you have a beautiful, beautiful card. Yay, you guys made it through. <laughs> Very cool. You guys love today's projects. This stamp set is absolutely beautiful and stunning to work with, you guys. You have to give it a shot if you love coloring, if you love that pretty focal point, um, get, this, get this stamp set. It's only available for another week. You guys have until March 31st to get it, and you will not be sad if you do. Now, you can get this stamp set for free when you place a $50 order on my online store this week. If you place an order by Friday, you get my make and takes for free. I ship them directly to you. You'll get all three projects ready to go so that you can create these projects at home. Plus, if it's $50, you'll get the stamp set for free and my free gift. Make sure that you use my code when you place your order, you guys, so you can get my free gift, my candle embellishments. Thank you so much, you guys. Have a fabulous week. I hope you get some time to craft and do what makes your heart happy. And we will see you guys next Sunday for the last day of celebration. Oh, bye, you guys. Thank you.